So I was uh, thinking the other day about uh, some of the issues that's been taking place in our country. And I'm the type of person, if something's going on and I don't have an answer, I just get quiet. Like I'm, I'm more scared that I'm going to say something dumb because I'm not the most articulate person sometimes. And I found that sometimes it's better just the wisest person can be the one that doesn't say anything. I was thinking about one particular show when I first started uh, in little small town Florida called Immokalee. And at this particular show, it was essentially uh, a group of Mexican kids, a group of black kids, and a group of white kids. And it was put on by two churches. One was the church from that town, another was a church from a more suburban area. And they came together to reach out to the community and they asked me to perform at it. Well, essentially, one of the youth groups was all white, the kid that was rapping with me was a white kid and um, the other youth group was predominantly black and, and Hispanic. And the idea was at, in this small community that racial tensions ran high that they would have sort of this 300 some odd kid youth rally to kind of put away some of the problems. And so they asked me to rap, perform at it and then to share the gospel at it. So I get up there, I do my thing, this is right when I was starting out so I was really nervous. Um, I go and I share the gospel and, and, uh, and then I turn it over to the youth pastor. I got really actually, to be honest with you, I got very nervous. Um, I was too scared to actually give the invitation, so I let the youth pastor do it. So he does it and he used the example of how him and the other youth pastor who was uh, Mexican, how that they were friends and that um, in Christ we had this sort of unification. And the response was okay. And uh, afterwards, you know, the kids were dismissed. They had like free food for them and stuff. It was in this little park. I'm standing out there, still kind of kicking myself that I didn't like give the invitation or whatever. Out of nowhere, I watched one of the kids pick up a trash can and just bash the, uh, another one of the kids across the head. Um, and, and for lack of a better term, all hell broke loose. I watched 300 Mexican and black kids just turn on each other that fast. And I've been in some scary situations. I've been in some scary street stuff. Without going into detail, I've seen some things happen very close to me that were scary. And that is in my top five, to see 300 teenagers turn on each other that fast over one person's incident. And um, the feeling of helplessness at that moment. On one hand, you're just trying to fight for survival. Um, and they just, a bunch of the kids grabbed the food and it was overturned, they just took off, the cops showed up, everybody took off. It's just this, this tremendous feeling of, of defeat. Um, because after everything you saw happen, you felt like, man, we were so close to, to a breakthrough and then to see how that happened. And I never forget one of the, that youth pastor, the Mexican youth pastor, was standing there with one of his youth who was a Mexican kid and his blood was just pouring down his face. And the look of frustration, the look of hopelessness. I mean, he didn't say any like choice words at that moment, but I just felt like, man, if there was ever time that someone would be letting loose a stream of profanity, that would be the time. And he didn't. He just felt, I could see how he felt so broken. And uh, I thought about that the other day, because it had been so long since that had happened. I thought about that, and I thought about the feeling of when people are enraged over something and when it comes from a place of race, or I should say, not race, but ethnicity, when it comes from that place, it may be one or two people that might feel justified in how they act, but the collateral damage was massive. And from the park, from the people, from those that didn't even probably have anything to do with it. And it didn't lead to anything getting better. If anything, it probably just led to things getting worse. And I thought, man, God, we, we need you. You know, this is where the church needs to be, and this is where the church needs to continue to be. The moral of the story is that this happened so long ago, and I hit up my homie that was there. I said, you know, what ended up happening years later? He said, man, it's like a totally different spot now. He said, in that town, and amongst that church, amongst that youth group, amongst that community, that the seeds of that, while frustrating and painful, bore a, a harvest years later. 
that the same problems don't exist there anymore, that they found a common ground and, and it really was in the common ground of Christ. And I thought, man, if our country, <laughs> if, 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 if a community can get that on a micro level, can't, I, I, my prayer is that our country can get that on a, on a massive level. Um, but I think so much importance of that is that the church is there in the middle of it, planting seeds that take time to grow.